Good morning, everyone. We are streaming live. I'm streaming live here in Houston, Texas. This is your Kinetics College. We do this every Monday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time in the U.S. How are you all doing? If you guys can hear me clearly and see me clearly, um, are you guys going to be able to um, tell me, please, in the comment section? So today we're going to talk about next-gen NCLEX case studies. Like I said, this is a show hosted by Kinetics USA, and this is a free NCLEX class we do every first Monday of the month, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. So we're streaming live in Facebook. Let me know if you guys are um, joining us today. Let me know what city or country are you guys located and your local time, all right? So again, Kinetics College is streaming live every first Monday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, and this is our regular show that we do. Kinetics College do the show every Monday, actually, and we take turns between NCLEX and English classes from our other peers, okay? So please watch Aspire RN and Kinetics USA hosting the show every first Monday, 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. My name, by the way, I'm sorry, my name is Dr. Nurse Paul. I'm a next-gen NCLEX expert and the CEO of Aspire RN NCLEX Prep Course. Thank you guys for joining us today. And uh, we have NCLEX scholarships. If you guys are interested to be part of our NCLEX scholarships, Send us a message or we'll flash the link in a little bit. There you go. It's apply at cusa.link slash aspire rn. Okay. So if this is something which you want, but you could not afford your NCLEX, join us in our scholarship program in partnership with Kinetics USA. And what they'll do is find you a sponsor in the US which will pay your NCLEX um, program under Aspire RN. So please mention to Kinetics USA that you want to join the program under Aspire RN. And uh, so let's see. We have people joining us from YouTube today. Dinner Car is joining us from South India through YouTube. Thank you for joining. Mary Noel is also here. Thank you guys for joining. We're going to do an NCLEX, next-gen NCLEX case study today who who among you guys are aware about next gen nclex i've been doing this show in kinetics usa um since last year and also on my own page at dr nurse paul in facebook youtube tiktok and instagram i've been doing this show every saturday 8 a.m central standard time on my own page um on top of kinetics usa kinetics college um and uh Next Gen NCLEX is the new NCLEX format that NCSBN will be using beginning 1st of April 2023. So we're like um, less than 25, less than 30 days away from the Next Gen NCLEX implementation. And in my program in Aspire RN, we've already moved to an NCLEX or Next Gen NCLEX compatible program. I do my classes every weekend for next-gen classes for my students. That's on top of their lectures. We do 42 days of live classes in my Aspire R and NCLEX program. But I also do free live classes here in Kinetics USA every first Monday. And in my own page at Dr. Nurse Paul every Saturday, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. So why don't you guys follow me on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Nurse Paul. And you can see my past shows where I talked about next gen NCLEX, my past shows about next gen NCLEX case studies, one of the most important updates. And I also had a show that's called the USA Nurse Series where I talk about immigration stuff, immigration related questions. So please um, follow me at Dr. Nurse Paul. And we also conduct next-gen NCLEX review classes. We are in partnership with Kinetics USA for scholarship program. Again, if you guys want this scholarship, please click the link that we're posting in the comments right now, and we're going to flash on the screen as well. It's cusa.link slash aspirern. And 
Connected CSA will get a hold of you, get you onboarded to our scholarship program. We give you qualifying exam to see if you meet the requirements. Of course, there are requirements. We're going to explain to you once you apply in that link. Otherwise, you can also visit my company website, AspireRN.com, and our next-gen NCLEX review classes and programs are there. We have next-gen NCLEX compatible review program, and I specialize in the NCLEX preparation of foreign graduate nurses. I've been doing this for 16 years, and I want to thank um, Kinetics USA for trusting me as one of their partners for providing NCLEX services to their nurses. We have hundreds of nurses from um, Kinetics USA, and a lot of them have passed the NCLEX already. Okay, so if you want to be part of the phenomenon, click that link right now or go to our website and you can find more information there. Or follow me at Dr. Nurse Paul as well, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube. And uh, Dinakar has a question about what is the procedure for an Indian nurse to come to the USA? This is an immigration related question, but I'd love to give you a brief overview. Um, you have to pass your NCLEX and find a sponsor, an employer sponsor that will petition you um, with an immigrant visa or a work visa. So easy to say, but a little complicated. You need an immigration lawyer to furnish all those papers and complete that paperwork for you. You need an employer who will sign those paperwork for you. But first of all, you need to pass your NCLEX first, all right? So click that link, in a car, and um, our recruiter is going to get a hold of you, all right? Kabugo said, the great, thank you for this great work. Of course, no worries. I have a lot of videos with Kinetics USA already, so please check out their video playlist section, or you can also go to my website at Dr. Nurse Paul, right? And because of that, give me one second because I forgot to share this show in my actual page. So why don't I uh, um, try to post right now and see if I can post that? All right. Can you guys tell me where you guys are coming from? I'm a little um, out of voice right now because I've been doing classes nonstop for a couple of days now. And, uh, um, of course, when I do that, of course, it uh, I lose my voice, right? Because I do a couple of classes every day. But let me just share this. Um, one second. One second. All right, while waiting, guys, can you guys let me know which country are you guys coming from in your local time? All right, I just shared it to the different groups so more students and nurses can join us. Wonderbird is here. Thank you, Wonderbird, for um, supporting Dr. Nurse Paul and Aspire RA. Momo is here from Cebu, Philippines. Rhoda is also joining us from Riyadh. Kabugo, if you want to join my other classes for NCLEX, I do free shows every Saturday at Dr. Nurse Paul in Facebook and YouTube. Or, I'm sorry, or or you can also join me via my, I'm sorry guys, I'm burping a lot. It's probably the coffee. But you can also join me guys through my website, AspireRN.com. Hey, Lee is here. She's my good friend. Thank you for joining me from Vancouver. It's 5 a.m. there. Shabir said he's from Pakistan. And Ahmed is from the Philippines. Thank you for joining, Carmen. Carmen Nitz is also from the Philippines. Vincent is joining us from Kenya. And Pascal is joining us from Suriname. Thank you guys for joining me today. Do me a favor and share this to your page so we can reach more nurses so that they're aware we're doing free classes under Kinetics College. And also do me a favor if you can click that button and follow me at Dr. Nurse Paul so you can find more information about the next generation NCLEX, all right? And one of the NCLEX changes that will happen beginning April 1, or are there any nurses here that will be taking their exam very soon, all right? Um, is the introduction of case studies. And I talked about this, um, I talked about this multiple times over Kinetics page and um, what's this? On my own page, I'm sorry, okay? I'm still, 
um, a little sleepy if you'd say that it's 7 a.m. here. But let me tell you something, all right? I'm going to do another show with Kinetics USA with Tanya Friedman, CEO, CEO of Kinetics USA, my good friend, on March 10, all right? Let me get the, the information for that. It's going to be on March 10, and we're going to talk about next-gen NCLEX, all right? I might do another free class. We'll find out. But um, we're going to do another um, show hosted by Kinetics USA, and that will be about Next Gen NCLEX. And we're doing a lot of these shows because we want everybody to know. And I tell you right now, I've been doing TikToks and YouTube videos and Facebook videos and so many other reels in Instagram since July last year or June last year after I finished my doctorate at school. But until now, there's still nurses joining my show and they're still not aware with Next Gen and Clex. All right. So I want you guys to be aware we're doing a lot of these shows for free because we want to be able to explain to you what will be changing in the NCLEX, especially if you haven't taken your exam yet. All right. Ahmed said, missing you here, Doc Paul. Thank you so much. Take a coffee. I have a coffee right here. Thank you. Of course. Very important for me to start the day with coffee. Mary is joining us from Bataan, Philippines. And uh, Kabugo is joining us in YouTube from Uganda. And it's 4 p.m. there. Cecil is also joining us from Isabela. But thank you, guys. Isabela is in Philippines, my home country. All right. And thank you, guys, for joining us again today. We're going to do one case study. Some of you guys who followed me on my page have probably seen this case study before, but you are going to help me answer this case study live today, all right? And what you're about to see today is the same thing that you will see when you take your NCLEX in the future. Again, beginning April 1, 2023, we are going to implement, or NCSBN is going to implement, we are going to use the next-gen NCLEX format and that includes the case study right jade is also here she's one of my students and a scholar of kinetics usa jade if you have time can you share in the comment section um briefly how's your experience with the kinetics usa scholarship program under aspire rn so we can encourage more nurses to join this scholarship program all right if you guys want to join the NCLEX scholarship program by Kinetics USA and AspireRN.com, we will post the link. We've posted it earlier, but it's in also in the comment section. But it's cusa.link slash AspireRN right there on your screen right now. cusa.link slash AspireRN, all right? And you can um, fill it out, and one of the recruiters will get a hold of you and walk you through the NCLEX scholarship process all right and uh, again for those who do not know me my name is dr nurse paul we are about to start with the next gen NCLEX case study i'm a next gen NCLEX expert 16 years with experience of NCLEX instruction and also the ceo of aspire r and you can find more information about me in my own page at dr nurse paul or in my web page aspirern.com Vanny Rose said she's a follower. She's my follower on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. Thank you so much for supporting Dr. Nurse Paul and Inspire Art. Vanny Rose and Renil said he's joining from Tagayan de Oro City, Philippines. Thank you guys for joining me today. All right, let's now talk about case studies. All right, again, do me a favor. Please share this to your pages. Share this to your pages so more nurses can join us today. Tag your friends in the comment section. I can see y'all's comments. And we're streaming live in multiple Facebook platforms and YouTube page of Kinetics USA, all right? And before I start with this, Jade said, Jade is one of our scholars in Aspire RN from Kinetics USA. It's wonderful, informative experience, recommending everyone to enroll to Aspire RN. Thank you, Jade. Thank you for enjoying our program. We'd we, we love to have you there. Jade, Jade has been with us for a couple of months now while waiting for eligibility, but... I think she's ready to take her exam, all right? But we're still going to finish your course, Jade, okay? Still have plenty of questions to finish in the question back, right, Jade? And Arthur said, um, is joining today. Oh, he was my student in the Philippines back in 2014. I've been teaching since 2008, but I moved here to the United States 
in 2017. I'll be celebrating my sixth year here in the United States. Is it six years? Yes. In a couple of days. I came here March 10, 2017, and I'm now an American citizen, right? Guys, let me tell you something about my stay here in the United States for six years, right? If there's one thing that I can tell you is that American dream is very real, all right? I know I've always wanted to go here. I took up nursing. My parents put me to nursing so I can come to the United States, have a better life. We grew up very poor. I grew up from very poor family, very poor. And uh, But um, I worked my way up. My mom helped me and, of course, my family to get where I'm at today, all right? But thankfully, because of hard work, persistence, determination, I'm now here living the life of my dream, okay? So... Here in the States, I worked as an ER nurse. I finished my doctorate in nursing practice. I'm also a certified family nurse practitioner and licensed as advanced practice registered nurse. So being poor is not a reason to stop and not dream, all right? It gives you the inspiration and motivation to do more in life, all right? So do not be contented with what you have right now. Find more things to do, all right? I always believe that all of us have purpose of why we are here, of why we're still alive. I'm an ER nurse. Everybody, you know, I've seen a lot of people die um, without reason, okay? Unexpected deaths. But there's a reason why we're still alive, right? We have a purpose in life. So find that purpose and be an agent for change, all right? So I grew up from a poor family, but I told myself... We're not going to stay poor forever. I'm going to work hard to bring my family up, to bring myself up, to fulfill my dream, to fulfill my mom's dream. I just recently came back from the Philippines. I visited my mom after being here in the States for five years. And I surprised her with a house that I paid in cash. We grew up in that house. My mom was surprised. And I'm very happy. I feel like at this point, I'm fulfilled. Over here in the States, I finished my doctorate, some of my biggest dreams. I have my own house, one of my biggest dreams. I have my own car. My investment um, retirement plans are set. I'm running my own business at my the comforts of my own home. If I could say it's a very blessed life, all right? But that life will not be here if I didn't pass my NCLEX 16 years ago, if I didn't push myself to wait and, you know, to, to be persistent with my American dream, right? Everything happens for a reason, right? And everything happens at the right time too. So keep pushing, guys. You're going to get here. Just keep pushing and don't give up. All right, Jay said, thank you so much, Sir Paul. I really enjoyed the lectures. It's really a game changer when I started with Inspire RN. I really recommend who want to take the other class and enroll with them. I'm saying that this is not just because I'm a scholar, but also based on my experience. Thank you so much, all right? Thank you, Kinetics USA, for... for um for uh, hosting this show for me, all right? I love that, you know, we have this social media platform where we can share our crafts and expertise. But honestly, this is more than sharing my expertise as an instructor today. This is me using my life message to tell you guys that if I can do it, a simple person, no money, no nothing, I just, my only investment was hard work. If I could do it, you can do it as well, all right? Little sacrifice can get you far in life, all right? So don't give up. Anklix may be changing, but we're going to keep fighting and we're going to keep chasing that American dream, all right? So I'm a testimony of what American dream is all about, right? And it could not be America. It could be Canada. It could be Australia. It could be something else that you want to achieve in your life. What I'm telling is, Find that one goal that you will anchor in. If you have that one goal that you will anchor your life in, you will always have a purpose waking up in the morning, okay? And for me, that is to make sure that my family will have a good future if I just keep working hard, all right? Thank you, guys. Now, for next-gen NCLEX case studies, each case study, there will be six questions, all right? Question number one, this is a clinical judgment model. Question number one will be about recognizing cues. Question number two will be about analyzing cues. Question number three will be about prioritizing hypothesis. Question number four will be about generating solutions. 
Question number five will be about taking actions and question number six will be about evaluating outcomes. In your NCLEX, there will be a minimum of three case studies with six questions each. So if you take the minimum items after April 1 in the next gen NCLEX format, the minimum items is now 85 items, 18 questions will guaranteed to be a next gen NCLEX case study, all right? And I love case study because it's like reading a patient's chart and the patient's um, case evolves and now you're gonna be asked more questions, all right? But it's very directed and we can predict what's gonna be the next question. Like for example, if I'm question number two and I'm analyzing cues, I know that the next question will be about prioritizing hypothesis. You know what I mean? If you just know the clinical judgment model, the pathway from question one to six, you can predict what's the next question or what's going to be the next question, all right? So last week, last Saturday, I did my Secrets of Next Gen NCLEX on my own page, Dr. Nurse Paul Show, and I taught strategies for the first three questions. And for question number four and six, I'm going to do another show about tips and tricks in the next couple of weeks. So follow me on Facebook as well and follow Kinetics USA as well because we do a lot of these shows They they invite me as a host, I mean, as a guest speaker or as a resource speaker. We're going to do another show, multiple shows. So please, 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 please follow me on Facebook and Kinetics USA so you can see all our posts, all our upcoming shows. Plenty of stuff for free, right? I wish I had this opportunity when I was younger and we didn't have this. So all we do is research, ask people that have already been here, but now... You can get this information for free over the internet and the comfort of your own, own home, okay? And even if you're watching this live later, if you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and I can I can probably give you an answer or if not, I can direct you to the right person, right? Anyway, so let's talk about a case study. You guys are ready? You're going to help me answer this question today, all right? This is case study number three that I'm doing with Kinetics USA. Case study number one was trained on January, on December, I'm sorry. And case number two, case study number two was streamed on February. And this is case number three today. All right. And again, I'm doing this show with Kinetics USA every first Monday of the month. All right. So go to the videos tab and find me there. You can see the old case studies that I did. All right. So let's read this case. I know it's a little, the font is tiny, but this is how it's going to be looking like in your actual NCLEX screen, all right? But we're going to read this together, guys. I'm going to have to zoom my screen because it's also very tiny, all right? The nurse in the emergency department is caring for a 41-year-old male client. Click to highlight the findings below that would require a follow-up, all right? Let's read the nurse's notes. At 11 o'clock, client reports nausea, loss of appetite, vomiting, fever, constipation for the past two weeks, and abdominal pain 7 over 10. Client states, the abdominal pain started after my 7-year-old child accidentally kicked me in the stomach. Client plays soccer with child once a week. Battle sites is 103.4 or 39.7. That's fever. Pulse 92, RR 22, BP 130 over 86, pulse oximetry reading 98% on room air. No significant past medical history. BMI 32, that's obese. Drinks alcohol only during social occasions. Usually three beverages, smoke cigarettes during social occasions. All right. Now, the, the, the task is for question number one, recognizing cues, is to click or highlight the findings below that would require follow-up. So this is one of the new types of questions. We're going to have to highlight. In your actual NCLEX, I would not be able to do this on screen right now because the app that we're using to stream the show is limited. I would not be able to annotate meaning right on the screen. But in the actual NCLEX, what you're going to do here is you're going to click the words or phrases and you're going to drag all the way to highlight it color yellow. You got me? I'm not going to be able to do it right now. But what we're going to do is tell me which findings do you think I should highlight or you should highlight if you are to get this case. Can you tell me those findings? Meaning in recognizing cues, we are talking about assessment. We are talking about normal versus abnormal. And your task is to find 
all of those abnormal findings, all right? But this time in the form of highlighting text, sometimes it's tables or matrices. Sometimes it selects all that apply question. Sometimes it's a drop down close, but this one is highlighting text. Can you tell me your abnormal findings? We'll give you a few seconds. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you, James, for joining. James is also one of our scholars in Kinetics USA and Aspire RN. He's now a USRN and is about to come here to the United States very soon. Congratulations, James. Abdominal pain, very good. Elaine, fever, very good. Vomiting, very good. Nausea, very good. Mary, vomiting, fever, constipation. How about you guys? What do you think are the abnormal findings that we should highlight? Very good. I'm getting more answers now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's answer this live. I'm going to highlight nausea, loss of appetite. I'm going to highlight. I'm going to pretend that I'm highlighting, right? Loss of appetite, vomiting, fever, constipation for the past two weeks. That's one. And then abdominal pain rated 7 over 10. That's another one. All right. That's two phrases. And I'm also going to highlight all the vital signs. From temperature to blood pressure, all of them are elevated, which means the patient has probably infection because of high, how high the fever is, and sepsis, right? We guys are familiar with sepsis, right? Sepsis is about what? It's type of a shock that is related to infection, those vasodilatory uh, modulators, chemicals, right, that is released by your um, inflammatory cells like mast cells can trigger massive vasodilation causing septic shock, right? Blood pressure will go down eventually, right? But also the patient looks like he's in pain because all the all the vital signs are increased. But we're going to highlight all of those, right? BMI, I don't think that's significant right now. Drinking, nothing more, all right? So I've already highlighted everything, all right? So those are the answers. You got it? You got it? All right, perfect. Now, let's go to your question number two. So again, question number two is about analyzing cues. In question number two, your skill that you need to master, and this is what I taught in my last show last weekend, is your pathophysiology skills. We need to identify assessments, signs and symptoms of each diseases. All right, so let's read. Again, the situation is the same. You look at your left side right here where I'm pointing at, right? The situation is the same. Nothing changed. But if you look on the right side, uh, right there, right? Right there, right? On the right side of the screen, right there, okay? You can see that the question changed. We're now in question number two of this case study, all right? It says there, for each assessment finding, click to specify if the finding is consistent with the disease process, bowel obstruction, appendicitis, ruptured spleen, all right? By the way, I didn't tell you guys. The question number one, right here, and question number two, both of these are going to be what we call right minus wrong scoring, right minus wrong scoring. That if you get this incorrectly, you're going to have a deduction, all right? For every incorrect answer, you're going to have a deduction. Right. So now we're going to go by column. Let's start with bowel obstruction. We're going to check all that applied. Think of this as a SATA, but multiple SATAs. We're going to go by column. All right. Is there appetite problem in bowel obstruction? I'll click that. Yes. Is there a pain that's like 7 over 10 in bowel obstruction? 7 is severe. 7 to 10, right? Yes. I'm going to check that. Is the bowel pattern, what's the bowel pattern that they said here? Is constipation with bowel obstruction? Yes, I'm going to check that. How about the gastrointestinal symptoms? Nausea, loss of appetite, vomiting, fever. Uh, bowel obstruction does not have fever, right? It does not have fever. It's not infectious. It's not inflammatory, all right? So I'm going to check ap appetite, pain level, and bowel pattern. Nausea is fine. Vomiting is fine. But... Uh, it says fever, though, so we're not going to check that. Okay? How about appendicitis? Appetite, loss of appetite. Yes, check. Pain level, check. 7 over 10. Bowel pattern, yes, check. I'll check that. 
gastrointestinal symptoms, nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, fever, constipation, blah, blah, blah. Answers, yes. So all of them check for appendicitis. All of them check. How about ruptured spleen? Loss of appetite, that's not a concern. Pain level, yes. Bowel pattern, that's not a concern. All right, fever, nausea. There's no fever. So I'm just going to check appetite and pain level. So they have loss of appetite. Any abdominal pain could have loss of appetite, all right? And with, with, with ruptured spleen, usually your pain is on the left upper quadrant radiating to the back. You can see tenderness there when you palpate the spleen, all right? Ruptured spleen would have massive blood loss, which leads to hypovolemic shock. That's our concern, all right? So those are our answers for bowel obstruction and appendicitis, okay? Let's move on to question number three. We're going to run out of time. We started late today, all right, because um, I woke up late. I was doing classes almost every day, but I do love doing classes. I've been doing this for 16 years. It's my passion. That's why I put up Aspire RN because it's not only a business for me. It's my life mission to be able to train quality nurses, help nurses, foreign graduate nurses. I'm a foreign grad nurse, NCLEX specialist past the end place. All right. That's my life mission. It's more than a business to me. If I earn money from there, it's bonus to me, but it's primary my mission first to help nurses pass the end clicks, get quality education. So I teach and I teach if I have to, all right. Until I'm sure that my students have passed the end clicks. All right. So select all that applies. Same situation on the left side in your actual end clicks. You must make sure that you read the case. All right. In this case, it looks like it's the same, okay? Sometimes you will see additional tabs after nursing notes. You might see history or diagnostics or labs or um, progress notes from the doctor. It's like looking at a chart or here in the States, we call that, we call that uh, what's this? electronic medical record, EMR, okay? So now select three, three complications. So this is one form of Select all that apply. It's not actually select all that apply. It's called multiple response. Select a specific number, all right? This is one of the new forms in NextGen NCLEX. So you see the first question was highlighting. The second question is matrix or tables. And the third question is multiple response. Select N or a certain number. How many answers do we need to answer today or five? Three, all right? Anemia, peritonitis, septic shock, hypovolemia, dysrhythmia, cardiac arrest. What am I going to choose? Peritonitis, very good. Septic shock, very good. And hypovolemia, very good. Correct? Right? Because peritonitis could probably be from appy or bowel obstruction. And then, of course, I mentioned septic shock earlier. Right? You see that temperature. You see that pulse. Pulse above 90. I know you say that high, high pulse of 100 is tachycardia, but in Sears, does anyone know Sears? Can anyone tell me what is Sears? Or anyone's practicing ICU or ER here? We're big in Sears and sepsis here in the States. Sears is S-I-R-S. What is Sears? It's a severe inflammatory respiratory, I'm sorry, severe inflammatory uh, response syndrome. Severe inflammatory response syndrome. In short, Sears talk about the early signs of of sepsis, all right? Here in the States where medicine is aggressive, we do not wait for sepsis to get worse. We want to be able to like manage sepsis way ahead of time. So septic shock, part of the symptoms are increased temp, pulse above 90, respirations above um, 20. And then you must have a source of infection, which in this case, the patient has fever. We just don't know where the Sources, but definitely there's a source, and it looks like an acute um, gastrointestinal infection because of the fever and because of the vomiting. Okay, all right. So the answers are two, three, and four. I'm sorry, I'm receiving emails. It's Monday morning here in the states. Two, three, and four. Okay, all right. So that's Sears. By the way, research that. All right, severe inflammatory, or I'm sorry, sy syndrome of. In a, in inflammatory response syndrome. Is that, is that what I said? Um, severe inflammatory response syndrome. I'm sorry, guys. I need more coffee. All right. Question number four is about generating solutions. What you need to master here is your planning skills. 
what to do, what to avoid. Those are the things that you need to remember. All right, so same question. Do not look at the question. It's similar. Let's now go to the to the questions, all right? The nurses reviewed the nurses' notes. It's 11.30, all right? Oh, there's a new note. Let's see the note because it says in the question, the nurse has reviewed the nurses' notes from 11.30. Let's see the note. If we click further... I would see the note at 11.30. What was the notes? It's not there actually. Well, it says in 11.30, not notified primary health care provider about client status, awaiting orders. That's the notes, all right? So for potential intervention, what are we going to do? For potential intervention, we're going to plan. It looks like the patient is having some form of appendicitis versus bowel obstruction here, right? All right, let's see. Do we need clear liquid diet if they have a possibility of infection to the GI tract? If we're in the ER, who's, who among you guys are ER nurses here? Can we give clear liquid diet or are we going to put them in NPO? Must be NPO, right? NPO, correct? Very good. Because this might be a surgical abdomen. When we say surgical abdomen, it might be an infection infection in the abdomen that might require surgery so we're going to click not indicated this is another form of a matrix question on a table not indicated how about soap suds enema no if that's the verticulitis bowel obstruction or api that enema or if you give them laxative might cause rupture so not indicated not indicated heating pad Heating pad, not indicated for abdominal pains because that might trigger rupture if it's an appy. Abdominal girth measurements. Measurement of the abdominal girth. Yes, you can do that to monitor for peritonitis. They will have increasing abdominal girth, all right? Abdominal CT scan. Abdominal CT scan. Yes, that's what we need to determine, is this diverticulitis? Is this bowel obstruction? Is this api? Is this coli? Is this pancreatitis? Is this acute gastroenteritis, all right? Or ulcerative colitis, so many other things, okay? So answer is indi not indicated, not indicated, not indicated, indicated, indicated. The last two will be indicated. You're gonna click that during your MX, okay? All right, let's proceed to question number five. Question number five is lengthy, all right? So um, if we can just hide my camera, Miss Milanis, for a little bit um, so we can read the situation. So at 1130, uh, we notified the primary health care provider about client status, awaiting orders, right? 1230, it says client transported to radiology department for abdominal CT scan. 1245, we've inserted an IV and no infiltration. And we're infusing at 75 ml per hour. 14 o'clock, patient's temp went down to 102.5. It was 39.7 earlier. It's 103 point something. Pulse went up from 92 to 110. RR went down to 20. Blood pressure 125.86, right? So um, in the next um, chart, it says 14.15. We've informed the provider about client status. There was an order received uh, for abdominal CAT scan and the client was transported to radiology. Okay, I just read it for you guys. It's behind my camera. Ordered received for CAT scan and then there's an uh, order to do CAT scan so we're going to transport the patient to radiology, right? Based on the diagnostic results, there is an acute appendix with calcified appendicolitis. There's an acute appendicitis. And there's also a ruptured appendix at 1445. Oh, no. So now we have a ruptured api. Okay, ruptured api. Now let's complete your questions. Complete the following sentences by choosing from the list of options. This type of question is called close, which means you have a word choices, right? From the box. From the box, you will see word choices. So the nurse should insert blank. What is that blank? What do you think we must insert? Anyone? 
Troy already has an answer. NGT or uh, Indwelling Foley? Anyone? All right, we're gonna go for NGT first because we need to decompress, right? So we're gonna do um, NGT. We're still in the ER. In the OR, they might insert a Foley, sure. But we're gonna do NGT to decompress. It's gonna be an abdominal surgery, all right? So de decompress that first, NGT. Next, priority for the nurse to request a prescription for what? What's going to be next? Analgesic, antipyretic, anti-infective. All of them are correct. What's a priority? Remember, you're talking about raptured api now. You're not just talking about api. You're talking about raptured api. Api is already... Ruptured patients are already developing peritonitis. Any further delays can cause further septic shock. Answer is anti-infective. Very good. We need to start antibiotic right away. Guys, in the sepsis protocol, antibiotics must be started within an hour. Within one hour. Within one hour. Okay, so priority. Yes, all of them are correct, but antibiotics are the priority. And the nurse should prepare the client for surgery within... If it's api only, sure, 24 hours. But this is ruptured api. Does this take priority? Is this an emergency api now? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. So answer is within six hours. Very good. Six hours. All right. Now, last. Oh, no. Let me read it for you. Let me open my slide from here in my computer, uh, from my phone, because I couldn't read it. Um, I'm sorry, guys. It's so much information. So that's one thing that you guys need to worry about, um, the, 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 the NCLEX, all right? Because there will be, like, case studies will be extra long, all right? So reading comprehension is very important here too, all right? Very important, your reading comprehension. Because if you don't like to read long texts, you're going to have a problem in the NCLEX, all right? Because again, case studies would require you to read those questions, those situations, and it can be as long as this. And this is only one tab. There can be multiple tabs. I'm, hold on, guys. I'm opening it on my phone so we can read it, okay? So it says there at 22.30 in the medical surgical unit, 20.30 first, 8.30 p.m., client transported back to the medical unit, and at 22.30, it says, client performing coughing and deep breathing exercises every hour while awake with incentive spirometer. Performing leg exercises every hour while awake. NGT has been removed at this point, right? Drinking clear liquids, abdomen board-like with diminished bowel sounds in all quadrant. Rebound tenderness is present, all right? So that's the negative finding there. Abdomen is still board like at 10.30 p.m. And rebound tenderness is present. Now, which of the following would indicate that the client is progressing as expected? There was no mention that the patient's already on clear liquid diet. The patient's still on MPO, so we're not going to choose that. Board like abdomen says... Board like abdomen says... Um, or means... Patient still has peritonitis. So yes, we're not going to be answering that. Rebound tenderness, no. Incentive spirometry use. When Seth as, is asking, does progressing mean worsening? No. When you say progressing as expected, patient is improving. All right? If they're asking for a negative response, they're going to say, which would indicate that the patient is worsening or the symptoms are worsening or the patient is not getting better. But if it says progressing as expected means improving. So answer is four, incentive spirometry use. And what else? Six, performance of leg exercises. Diminished bowel sounds, rebound tenderness, more like abdomen still means that the patient still has um 
peritonitis from the ruptured epi. Clear liquiditis wrong. It should, should still be on NPO. Um, one person asked, Lou asked, sir, can we do surgery if the temp is 39.2? There's no reason to not do surgery here. This is a ruptured epi. Yes, regardless of the temp, they will do surgery. But of course, we're still going to manage fever. But the question earlier was, what was the priority? There are three options. All of them are correct. In the NCLEX, you only choose one. Yes, we need to manage pain. Yes, we need to manage fever. But the patient will die first, not from fever and not from pain. The patient will die first from septic shock. So we're going to have to stop septic shock cycle by giving fluids. And that's not in the option. And the second one is antibiotic within one hour, all right? Septic shock, once the patient enters Sears, all right, and they have all the symptoms, you're now time-bound in the ER. We have to start, we have to give, um, I'm sorry, we got to blood draw, do blood cultures, start IV fluids, give antibiotics within one hour, all right? Within one hour. So it's time-bound. Can you imagine that if you have four patients, all of them are sepsis, you got to be able to make sure that they're not leading into septic shock. And a lot of patients lead to septic shock, right? We do not want that. So anti-infective is the priority in that question, all right? And here, the answers are four and six. No worries, guys. Clear liquid fluids, Ronnie, no, because it's not in the situation, all right? In the situation, it didn't say that the patient's already drinking clear liquid fluids. But if it's in the situation, sure. But in the situation, look at 2030 and 2230. There was no mention that the patient has moved to clear liquid fluids. And plus, patient still in NPO. It's in the notes. Can I see that? Hold on. Let me see. Client. Uh, while awake. With, uh, I don't see it. Oh, drinking clear liquids. I'm sorry. Drinking clear liquids. Well, that that's a good indication. I'm sorry, guys. We missed that. But yes, let's add number one. I'm sorry, because that means the patient's able to tolerate fluids now and no longer nauseating. Okay, you got it? You got it? We're going to add that. So what's that's one, four, and six. All right. Any questions about case studies? Do you like case study setup? I, I've, I've surveyed quite a few nurses and they love case studies. I feel like I love case studies because this is like back in nursing school, right? And honestly, the way we do this is why NCSBN is doing case studies is because they want you to improve your clinical judgment. When you eventually work in the United States, um, you know, medicine is more aggressive than, than in other countries, right? Which means we are protocol-based, we are guideline-based, we implement stuff faster. Most of our managements in the ER are time-bound, which means we have to do it at a certain time rapid management we do not wait for complications to arise before we do something we are proactive which means we do something right away and not reactive which means we wait for symptoms to happen before we do something so that's what it is plus nurses need to be more autonomous nurses need to be very smart nurses need to advocate for their patients protect their patients and nurses should you know be doing stuff clinically and evidence-based. That's why this is why clinical judgment model is very important and case studies because it gives you an overview of what we need to do if you are working here in the U.S., all right? So do me a favor if you're going to do it, uh, if you're going to take an NCLEX in the future, all right? If you already have an experience outside the U.S., clinical judgment is good. I believe you already have a clinical judgment, but we're going to leave some of those stuff there because some of those stuff that we do outside the u.s is not appropriate in the u.s all right here we follow evidence-based guidelines change all the time that's why here we go education every time we always have certifications to complete classes to complete modules to complete because they keep changing we need to be updated all right anyway if you guys have questions you can send me a message or kinetics usa as well also, if you guys are interested with a scholarship, please visit the link cusa.link slash aspirern, all right? If I ask you, can you pass the next gen NCLEX, can you give me a big yes, I can? Let's manifest that and claim it, all right, everybody? Can you pass your NCLEX? Put in the comment section, yes, I can. Let's do it. 
Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right. So let's manifest that. Yes, I can. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Do me a favor and share this to your pages because even though we're ending, we are recording this show and this is going to be live in our Facebook pages. So please tag your friends also in YouTube, also in LinkedIn. So please tag your friends. They're going to learn a lot from here. I just want them to know about the next gen NCLEX. If they're foreign grads and they're going to Canada and Australia, they're also going to need to take the NCLEX. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Follow Dr. Nurse Paul and Kinetics USA in Facebook pages. I'm so happy to do this with you guys today. And I hope to see you first Monday of every month, Kinetics College. I'll see you guys there. Or follow me on my page. I have another show this Saturday. Again, I have multiple shows this week. One is with Kinetics USA. It's going to be Next Generation and Clex. All right, March 10. Please check the Facebook page for time. And the other one is going to be on Saturday on my page. It's going to be about taxes in the USA. So please keep supporting Kinetics USA and Dr. Nurse Paul. Also, please follow my page, Dr. Nurse Paul and Inspire RN. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kinetics, for hosting this show. Thank you, guys, for being participative and cooperative today. And I'll see you guys soon. You guys have a great day. Bye.